Eu concordo que você é um excelente narrador, um excelente escritor, e principalmente porque as suas narrativas, né, elas resgatam o passado, trazem para o presente e projetam um futuro. Em relação ao imperador de todos os males, você diz que, ah, coloca né, que 7 milhões de pessoas morreram de câncer em todo o mundo. Né? Ah, o que, que você acha de ah, novos tipos de procedimentos? Por exemplo, a Angelina Jolie, há ah, alguns anos atrás, ela fez a mastectomia bilateral profilática, porque ela tinha o BRCA1. O que, que você acha desses procedimentos baseados em genética? Well, I think people have different reactions to uh, their own genetic uh, propensities. Um, I think that, um, uh, you know, and we need to respect individual decisions. She wanted to have uh, no risk uh, or lower her risk beyond, uh, you know, to the lowest point, which is why she decided to have the procedure. But some people obviously don't want to do that. There are many other options. There is the possibility of taking uh, drugs um, to lower risk. There's a possibility of intensive monitoring to also lower risk. Um, so I think one of the things in medicine is to respect the individual desires and uh, decisions of, of individuals as long as they are within reason. Um, uh, some people you know, might come up with an idea of reducing risk that doesn't make sense. And the job of the physician there is to really tell them that that doesn't make sense. It's not the appropriate way to reduce, reduce risk. Um, one of the things I'm very hopeful about is that even with even patients with BRCA1, and this is something that the audience might not know, we still cannot tell, if even if you have the BRCA1 mutation, we know that in general or on average, your risk of uh, getting breast cancer in your lifetime is increased several fold, maybe 10, 20 fold above the uh, general population. What would be very helpful is if we could tell patients a little bit more, which is to say, not in general, but what is your individual risk of um, having breast cancer or aggressive breast cancer early on in your life uh, or having a more less aggressive breast cancer that would be can be surgically removed you know, later on in your life, in your 70s or 80s. Um, if we could tell that by genetic mechanisms, by sequencing other genes, I think we would do patients a big service because then they could choose to have the procedure or avoid the procedure based on a real personal assessment of risk. Right now, it is a very, I would say, a very uh, non-granular or a uh, very um, uh, non-personalized assessment of risk, just one gene. And, you know, you can have uh, breast cancer early on in your life and die from it, or you can have a breast cancer that happens very late, a small breast cancer that may not affect your life as much and may be easily removable by just surgery or perhaps by chemotherapy uh, following surgery. So, so, So two principles come out of this. Number one, is that we uh, need more science to tell us about individual risk, personalized risk. And number two, um, I think that decision is ultimately personal.